Welcome to the IT Channel Inbound Marketing Podcast, episode number 12. How to grow a software or tech company with inbound marketing and sales. I am your host, Joshua Feinberg, and I'm joined today by Carol Mahoney, founder, chief experience officer, chief marketing strategist, and analyst at Mahoney Internet Marketing in Portland, Maine. The IT Channel Inbound Marketing Podcast helps IT channel companies, especially those in IT consulting, computer repair, managed services and cloud, use inbound marketing and content marketing to attract highly qualified visitors, convert visitors into engaged leads, close sales faster with the right kinds of clients, and delight clients for long-term retention. In this episode, we're going to look at how to grow a software or tech company with inbound marketing and sales. So I am here with Carol Mahoney of Mahoney Internet Marketing in the Portland, Maine area. And we're talking today about how software and tech companies can really reevaluate what they're doing with marketing and look specifically at content marketing and inbound marketing to be able to power their growth. So thanks so much today for joining me, Carol. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, it's a beautiful September day here in Maine. We have lots of foliage going on and so forth. So um, I, as I'm t talking with you, I'm, I'm looking out over the lake at all the yellows and oranges and reds. So it's a very nice background. Well, having grown up in, in central Jersey, I miss the season changes a little bit. We're still in the brutal heat of the <laughs> summer oh, down yeah. here. And, and sometime around middle of November, it'll start cooling off to the point where the nighttime lows will be back in the 60s. But it's mm -hmm. it's still brutal here. And the interesting part that you wait with bated breath also is in living in a state that's uh, got a bullseye on its back with hurricanes is you're always waiting for the oceans to cool off. And then you have about another month before the hurricane risks completely disappear. Right, right, yeah. You know, you're it's it's you know you're always looking at the weather to 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 see how it's going to affect you and so forth. So, which actually is kind of a good segue into what I was going to say about uh, software and tech companies is that there's a lot of things that have changed in their environments over the past, well, what ten years, twelve years, fifteen years, and and we see it happening everywhere. And I know we're talking about inbound today, but I was actually thinking about it this morning as I was driving into the office and. You know, the thing with inbound is a lot of people say, well, you know, it's a marketing thing or, you know, now it's a sales thing and there's all of these different aspects and focus of it. And a lot of times what I say to people is inbound is a business thing. It's changing the way people do business and connect with people, customers. Um, and so that's really what the environment has changed. I recently read a book called Small Town Rules and I was delighted by this book because I grew up in a small town with small town businesses. And so I get that whole con connectivity type of a thing. And that's the thing with, especially with tech companies that I've worked with that I find they struggle with is that they focus a lot on the things that they do in the tech side. This is the features. Um, and then the challenges is what I call, you know, getting them to speak plain English or getting someone to speak customer. So you do all of these great things, but what does that mean to their daily workflow, to their daily life and so forth? So. I mean, as a definition of inbound, inbound is really a customer thing. It's not a sales thing. It's not a marketing thing. It's really a client customer thing. That makes a lot of sense. Now, you've worked on inbound campaigns for lots of different industries and, and a few software and tech companies. What do you think has been the common ground? What is similar and what's different about how the software, the tech entrepreneur looks at marketing compared to other kinds of less, um, more brick and mortar kind of businesses? So the the a lot of businesses struggle with the sort of data scientific technology side. So if you get, you know, a, a service based business that has never really dealt in technology before, the inbound technology side of thing, that's kind of the struggle for them. They don't really struggle with the personal connection side. And it's in the reverse for a lot of tech companies. They get process, they get data, they get, you know, how to logically put things together. But when you try to get them what you might even call the art side of inbound, that personal connection side, that's where they seem to struggle is, okay, we're doing this, but then what? Like they're always waiting for that sort of next step and rather than letting people sort of drive the process. So it's really focusing on the people side for technology companies, which is why when I work with tech companies, they have no problem setting goals and milestones. They have a problem creating buyer personas though, because 
they have to get inside their customers' heads to do so. But once they do, it's a very powerful thing because it affects their product development, it affects their marketing, it affects their sales. I mean, you know, we look at HubSpot as an example of a tech company that gets people. Um, then more tech companies that can start to follow, I think, that type of a model are the ones that are going to see early success and sustain success long term. Now, for a small business owner that's really not doing much proactive marketing at all, when you ask them what their marketing plan is, they talk about, well, we do lots of word of mouth, and you kind of want to put the air quotes around do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, do you, what do you suggest that they start with? Is it really just as, as simple as personas to make sure that they're going down the right path, or is it more of an education process that marketing isn't optional? It's first an education process that marketing is an optional, and it's also changing the perspective of what marketing is. A lot of them will think in the ways of more interruption marketing, let's run an ad, or let's go and sponsor an event, um, or those types of things. When you start trying to teach them to start giving away some of their knowledge and expertise for free, say, for example, on blog posts, um, LinkedIn groups, things like Quora, uh, where they can actually provide answers to questions with no anything in return, that's where I see that they start to struggle because they struggle with, well, that's my intellectual property and what makes me special. And my point is exactly. So use that to differentiate yourself and start to attract the people that you're going to use to build your buyer personas. Buyer personas are something that you you don't just do it once and then you're done. It's a continual learning process that you continue to refine as you get closer to your target ideal customers. When you're taking on new clients, what do you find is the most common form of marketing that they're using before they found you? Is it still marketing that looks like it's 2005? Is there a common thread across the board? They're it, still doing trade shows. Um, they're typically, they've probably given up on print and direct mail because of its expense at that point. There are still some that do it. I'm up here in Maine, um, and it's still a pretty strong thing here in Maine because it ties back into having something to physically to hand someone at a trade show. Um, I also find a lot of them are doing pay-per-click. They're just starting to get into blogs um, and you know those types of interactions that I was describing on social media. So they're still doing the, I don't even know if I would say 2000, maybe 2005. What's interesting, too, is this is the same crowd that watches the pace of change going on in their own industry and reacts to it a little differently, but for the most part keeps up with it. A lot of these same folks are kind of looking and saying, well, I thought cloud computing would be a fad. Well, maybe it isn't, so maybe I should start paying a little more attention to it. Or it seems like clients don't want to have a lot of server in infrastructure in their office. Maybe we should get into managed services. But when it comes to kind of looking at if marketing and sales are changing, I think what ends up happening is they're spending so much time and resources thinking about what they need to reinvent with the core skills and platforms and stuff like that that they support that if, especially for a small company where there isn't a partner that's necessarily dedicated to business development, mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily have the, the time or the, the wherewithal to think about changing their kind of go to market strategy. It's funny you say go-to-market strategy, and that's a lot of times the terminology that tech companies use. Um, and it's I, I kind of chuckle a little bit because it's you're already in the market. It's <laughs> you don't go there; they come to you. So I wish we could change that phrase, but I know that it's popular, so I won't argue. But um, I think that what they need to realize is that they spend a lot of times developing a plan and a strategy and they're going on a lot of assumptions and the thing that I say to people is that you need to start acting on what you know now in order to direct what you need to do next so don't spend any more than 30 days developing a strategy and personas to start acting on because if you spend more than that then you're just getting into the weeds and you don't even really know for sure um, I think that the key thing is being able to react quickly and in real time and if you're spending all of your time as marketing sometimes does in an ivory tower without being in the field with salespeople, getting on sales support calls, getting on all of those types of things, you have to have your hand in a little bit of everything. What do you do to manage expectations when you're taking on new clients to make sure that they're really in it for the long haul? Um, you know, when they go to a trade show, there's an expectation that they walk out with leads. When they're advertising on pay-per-click, if it's done right, they're going to start getting clicks within hours or within a couple of days. How do you set their expectations differently with the 
uh, mindset that's necessary to be, to be successful with an inbound campaign. So when I set expectations with a new client, there's um, an adage that I've been saying for a long time is that it really only requires a couple of things to be successful online, time and money. Um, because if you have the time and you're smart enough, you can figure out how to do a lot of this stuff. But if you don't and you need to have the money to do so, um, the reality is it's a combination of both. There's going to be a certain amount of their time required to see the results. And then there's going to be a certain amount of money also required to see those results because if, like you said, they don't have time to do it all themselves. So they're going to need to hire extra help. And so when I sit down and do uh, a scope with someone or figuring out what their business goals are, it's not just a numbers of how many dollars do we need to generate. But I'm looking at all of their resources. I'm looking at their technology that they have available to save them time, how much time they actually have, like, you know, at least a minimum of five hours a week. Um, and then also, I want to look at if we start developing 100 leads for you next month, how are you going to handle those? Because that's, again, a time factor. Do you have the time to follow up with those all properly so that we can see those results? It's not just traffic. It's not just leads. It's also sales. Um, so, and really what I'm trying to do is to get them to understand that this is going to be work involved. This isn't like where you could just pay someone X number of dollars, they run an ad and your phone starts ringing and you get sales. It's, it doesn't work that way. So it sounds like to a certain degree you're trying to explain smarketing without bringing that word into the <laughs> discussion because in, in a company where there's n at least not a full-time salesperson and at least not a full-time marketing person, which let's face it is very rare below a company without a million or two million in revenue, mm -hmm. um, you have to get them to think of, okay, yeah, I'm wearing that hat a couple hours a week, wearing this hat a couple hours a week, and maybe yeah. it's different people within the company. Um, is is there a way to explain it without bringing that buzzword into, into the I discussion? Look at it. I do. I, I So I uh, have a client right now and I have two meetings a week that I set with them to convene on certain things. And so on Thursdays we talk about marketing. This is what's going on in marketing. These are the things that are coming up. These are the blog posts that he contributes to, I contribute to, the other writers contribute to. You know, what are the offers going to be this month? And basically educating him that way. Now this is a one-man shop. On Mondays, we have a what I call pa, sort of pipeline review, where we're actually going through the pipeline, looking at the deals, looking at the process, looking at the questions that were asked, how many times do we need to contact them, what was the result, basically. And between the two of those, I'm the one who's aligning sales and marketing together, even though it's only one person who's doing it. His time is divided between development, service, sales, marketing. I'm just making sure that he's focusing on the things that he needs to focus on while at the same time looking at the big picture of where do we need to be in the next three months, six months, 12 months. So, you know, I can say smarketing to him and he thinks it's, oh, it's a funny, catchy phrase, <laughs> but it's not like I'm saying, okay, now we're doing smarketing. It's just part of the process. So it sounds like when there's no VP of sales, that's another hat that you need to wear just simply because if nobody's there worrying about sales strategy, then ultimately they're going to blame marketing if it doesn't work and blame you. And, and right. you know, it's very similar to when an IT company goes into a small business that doesn't have in-house IT. It's not like the tech consultant or MSP or whatever it is can say, hey, it's a phone problem. I want nothing to do with it. For a small but they want the single throat to choke. And... <laughs> Well, and that's why you, you asked earlier, too, about setting expectations. And the the thing that I say to a lot of people is that um, well, a lot of people will come to me and they'll say, well, I want you to create an inbound strategy for me. And I said, okay, well, why is it that you need an inbound strategy? Well, I need to grow my business. Why do you need to grow to your business? What does grow your business look like in dollars? And so it's not, and IT companies need to realize this as well, and this is going back to talking the language of the customer. Why are they hiring you? What is the problem that they're trying to solve? Not the solution, which is the inbound marketing strategy or the IT infrastructure plan, but what is the problem that they're trying to solve? So example, with an IT company, um, you know, we're losing files that are being updated on our server and so it's causing a break in our workflow and things aren't getting done on time. That is the problem that they're trying to solve. They don't really care what the solution is as long as it solves the problem. When someone hires me as an inbound consultant, they hire me because they're trying to grow their business. They don't care about marketing or personas and or even that it's called inbound, just help me to grow my business. And my job is to make sure that I have all of those tools in order to help them to reach their goals. It'll be called something else in five minutes anyway. <laughs> The uh, final question that I wanted to ask you is what do you see as the single biggest thing that a small business owner or manager needs to make sure that they understand to be successful with inbound? 
their customer. Why? I'm sorry. Actually, let me rephrase that. People don't buy because they need something. People buy because they want something. What is it that they want to buy? Again, going back to the problem and the solution. So they need to know and understand their customer because as long as they do that and they can follow them, all of the other stuff doesn't matter. It's excellent. Excellent advice. A really, really unique way of thinking about it. Everyone is so focused on conversion rates and bounce rates and uh, keywords and, and clicks and engagement, but you know, bring it back to a lot of basics, which is especially important for uh, the small company that doesn't have the full-time resources to devote to this in a lot of depth. And as we were just talking about before, um, for someone like yourself, it's really important to be able to take on a lot of different roles and wear a lot of different hats for your clients that don't have those roles in place. Right, or know those people that you can pull in that do. I'm not a uh, jack of all trades, but I'm smart enough to know the people that are experts at what they do. There's a, you know, a discussion that's going on and even in the HubSpot Partners Forum about, uh, you know, do we specialize and go niche and ignore a certain part of the market and turn business away? And my answer is yes, because if you do what you're best at, then people collaboratively can work together to do what's in the best interest of the customer. And, um, you know, and I also think this, that the customer is the context for everything. So pay-per-click rates, open rates, like you were discussing conversion rates, all of those things need the context. And if you don't have the context, then you're really not doing anything but, again, the science side. And specialization is really key also. That's something we were talking about 10 years ago for what... Uh, IT companies need to be able to do to effectively partner with others is if their websites look just like everyone else, if their company name looks just like everyone else and no one can tell what they're really, really good at, it doesn't make for finding complementary skill sets because everyone's just going to be paranoid that you're all basically in the same business. And, th and that's a, a big problem in the, the uh, managed services space right now is the lack of differentiation, which brings us back full circle to personas and knowing the customer. Right, exactly. And knowing is knowing your own skill set equally as well. I mean, especially when you're talking about managed services. Um, managed services is something that where does your team's expertise lie? That's what you need to focus on, not making sure you've covered all of the bases and you have a really big net because people come to managed services because of their expertise. Makes sense. I've been speaking with Carol Mahoney of Mahoney internet marketing in the Portland, Maine area. Carol, what's the best way for people to keep tabs on what you're working on, blogs, social media? Um, what's the best way for people to keep up with you? So um, if you want to follow me and what I think in real time, like ADHD going hyperdrive, then follow <laughs> me on Twitter. <laughs> um, my Twitter handle is um, MyNetMarketing, so M-I-N-E-T Marketing. Um, if you want to see the more sort of professional, not always kind of whacked out me, that's definitely on LinkedIn. Um, and then my blog also as well is where I, I try to bring these points home a little bit. A lot of times things that are just in front of my face end up on my blog. And what's that URL? That is uh, minternetmarketing.com backslash blog. Very good. Appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today for our IT channel inbound marketing podcast. We've been talking about what software and technology companies can do to get more, uh, to get better results from their internet marketing. Thanks again, Carol. Thanks, Josh. Thank you for listening to this episode of the IT Channel Inbound Marketing Podcast. If you learned something valuable from today's episode, please search for the IT Channel Inbound Marketing Podcast in the iTunes Podcast Directory and give us a five-star rating. To get access to past episodes and be notified about upcoming episodes, be sure to visit www.sphomerun.com forward slash podcast. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you back again next time. Take care now.